This is Hashtag Finance, presented to you by the Canadian Securities Exchange, the exchange for entrepreneurs, with your host, Anil Mall. Thank you for tuning in to another Hashtag Finance episode brought to you by the Canadian Securities Exchange. Today, we are profiling a company called Tarachi Gold Corp. It is TRG on the Canadian Securities Exchange. And I have Lauren Warner joining us. Uh, along with Richard Graham, and Richard represents Inventa Capital. We'll get into both of these. Why are we talking to two different people today? Welcome, gents. How are you? Good, thank you. Thank you very much. Of course, Lauren. Let's start with you. You're 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 the president and CEO at the at the head of uh, Tarachi Gold Corp. Um, why don't you give our viewers and listeners a, a, an introduction to Tarachi Gold Corp? What is the vision with this company? Well, Tarachi's original vision was to get into Mexico. It's an area where it's in a certain area in Mexico where they, it's known to contain large gold and or silver deposits. And from a history of the management that we have, you know, you want to be where you make deposits. That's where you want to explore to find more. And that's, that's, that's always the case, it seems like. So they initially set themselves up in the Sonora province in Mexico, looking for and acquired uh, about six or seven different concessions with some very good grades of gold uh, related to some uh, epithermal deposits and, and a close proximity to other existing mines as well. They were able to do that when no one else was interested in gold. And then since then, going from an exploration company, we are now moving ourselves towards uh, within the next year or so, possibly becoming a production company. That's our vision. You know what? I, I think you've summarized it great. And we're going to get into all of these details, but I'm going to jump over to Rich, uh, Richard over here. Richard, Inventa Capital, uh, how is, what is Inventa Capital and how are you involved with Tarachi Gold? Uh, thanks for asking. Good question. Um, Inventa Capital, uh, by definition, it's a private investment uh, group focused on global assets. Um, there's different components of Inventa Capital from the media side, um, obviously from our public company side, um, an investor relation aspect as well. Um, but my involvement with Tarachi Gold is, is amplifying the story, just making sure it falls on the right ears, um, creating an elite shareholder base. Wonderful. So, Lauren, Tarachi Gold, your focus is Northwest Mexico. Uh, it's the Sierra Madre Gold Belt in, in Eastern Sonora. Is that correct? Correct. So why don't we begin by talking about this region and its past history and why you guys are so bullish on this, this location? Um, we're bullish sort of geopolitically first. We, you know, you look at countries that are stable enough to be able to work in. And we felt that Mexico was a great place to be. Um, also, we have connections down there. The company and people that have been with the company for a while know a lot of people in Mexico, some very good people that can help you get your work done. And, and country management is a very key thing. You have to have good management. I've worked internationally for years, and if you don't have that, you're not going to succeed. So the company was able to have good management. We have good management here in Vancouver. And then it was comes down to the geology in Mexico. In that area, for example, I think resources, reserves, production, over 80 million ounces of gold, okay? That's gold. One and a half billion ounces of silver have been uh, produced from, from that area, for example. So again, elephant country, you know, and, and, and great deposits, and it's not overexplored. Uh, the company was able to go into and acquire concessions where they had some systematic exploration where they had a few drill holes that came up with some very good grades and that basically there had not been too much more done since then because basically how many how many years now has it been when we can't get anyone to invest in gold it's been really a tough time and when that time was nearing its end but still in there that's when the people the management of Trachi came down and said let's get started so I understood. Yeah, you, you, you bring up a great point that, that the whole industry uh, sector is very cyclical and we, we wait for the gold prices to go up like they, they naturally have right now to be able to go out 
into the field and, and, and build projects and companies like yourself. So how, what was your background like? What, what is your background in the mining space? Uh, you, you obviously said that you worked internationally. Um, do you want to talk to our audience about how you come about this and, and what makes you so bullish on the mining sector? Well, I've been, I've been involved in it for now, geez, um, close to f- almost 40 years. Hate to say <laughs> it, but quit, quit laughing, Richard. <laughs> These young guys. I used to be the, always the youngest guy in all the crews, you know. And then next day you wake up and it's like, what happened? But anyways, I used to work for the major mining companies in the past. I worked for Naranda. I worked for Placer Dome. Uh, then with those companies, uh, like, again, I, I'd like to say I'm an exploration geologist, but I did spend a lot of time working in the mines. I worked in open pit and underground mines. I, uh, and I did take some uh, sections of areas or other projects from, uh, you know, exploration into production. So I've, I have that experience. And that's quite critical for a, for a geologist to be able to go through all that and be able to work with those teams. So uh, with that, this spring, when I was introduced to Tarachi team, I looked at what they had done. And again, that strong management in, in, in Mexico and the projects that they have and their vision, I said, yes, I, I, I would uh, like to be able to join this team. So, so in the summer, you guys completed a very small drill program or, or you completed a drill program. You guys are, oh, sorry, you completed an exploration program in the summer yes. and you're going into a drill program. If I'm not wrong, you guys are mobilizing another drill coming up shortly or is that already in process? Yes, what we did this summer, uh, again, with, uh, with COVID and everything else, we're still be able, we were able to work down through there. We had uh, three senior geologists and, and, and others join and we went to each one of these concessions and started to do more detailed geological mapping, uh, in particular structure. Uh, structure or structural analysis is very key to some, these type of deposits. These are what we call epithermal, high sulfidation epithermal gold deposits. And, but there, there's a lot of structural control to those. And if you I, do- I just wanted to jump in there because there are, our, our viewers and listeners are quite green most of them when it comes to the mining sector do you want to give them a little bit of a a, a summary on what the epithermal uh, oh, deposit- hey, i got a great analogy i can give you, if you know, if this, i think everyone knows yellowstone okay and you got there you got the geysers coming up and basically that is very very much what i'm describing when i say epithermal in terms of you got these hot waters coming up near surface so uh, and, and they'll be bringing up a little bits, you know, trace amounts of gold. And over time, they, they deposit as the temperature decreases or some chemistry changes. So right now, it's, for example, in, in Yellowstone, maybe 100, 200 meters below surface right now, there's bits of gold being deposited down there as well. But that's a, when I say epithermal, that's exactly just think of Yellowstone and, and just look down about 100 meters below surface. And that's what we're dealing with right now. Perfect. I, I always like to make sure that these term, the, the mining terminology, we have a brief summary to it because obviously Richard, yourself and I and Lauren, we've worked in the industry for quite a long time. You know, some of these terms are almost second nature to us. Um, mm-hmm. but for our viewers and listeners, I think it's very important to differentiate from the different, um, the different terms that are there. So I'll let you continue because you were going into what's happened since the summer there. So think, okay, so think about Yellowstone. Just think that you probably have a fault. So the rock's broken and that's why the water's able to come up. And, and just imagine where, let's say you have another structure or fault that's crossing that one. So the two cell uh, meet each other. So that's a great spot for fluids to be able to, to move along and be able to deposit. So that, when I say our geologists this summer were mapping, we we're looking for those structures that we felt were of the right age. We're talking, you know, millions of years ago where these structures were probably open and that the fluids were able to come in. And so when we find those intersection points, that's typically a, a good spot to be looking for gold mineralization. What we have, we're fortunate enough to have is some previous drilling, which is telling us that there is some good gold there, some quite good grades, where uh, we have intercepts of like close to an ounce of gold over five meters. Well, that's very good grade. 
And, you know, there hasn't been too much work on that area since the few of those holes were put down. And that's what we're following on right now. So my, my question to you, Lauren, is, and Richard, feel free to jump in if, uh, if you, you feel late. Um, you mentioned previous drilling being done on this. Was that previous drilling done by Tarachi Gold or was this uh, no. historic? This is, the, this is the history of how I've, I, I, I really like projects that have had a little bit of systematic work. Like I lived in Timmins, Timmins for five, six years. That's a major gold mining camp. And, and I've worked, lived in other places in Nevada and everywhere else. And you come to really like these projects where they've had a little bit of work done on them, maybe some geochemistry, geophysics, a few drill holes. And it's just getting the pieces to the puzzle put together. So yes, these people got some very good drill hole grades back then, um, but they could have stopped because no one cared about gold anymore. They couldn't raise their funds. There's a whole bunch of different issues. And these things are more common than not. And so that's why Trachi came down and acquired these projects. And they're very close to other areas where there are mining or big resources already existing. So that just that whole infrastructure play goes hand in hand to why we're working in this area. And that's where we, we did that work this summer. And then it comes September, we mobilized our first diamond drill in one of our Southern concessions. And just now, as I talked to them this morning, uh, we're mobilizing the next rig. We had to do some more work on some trails and things like that to get our equipment in there. And so that's where we're at right now as of this morning. Great. For my next one, I'm going to actually jump over to Richard, but Lauren, feel free to add to it um, right after. Because what I want to know is, is obviously a lot of eyeballs are on the, the precious metal sector, specifically gold. You mentioned you're in a, in a great region that's got geopolitical stability. You guys have a good workforce, a very strong team who we'll talk about more. But I'm more curious on what that shareholder sentiment has been like. Uh, Richard, I'm, I'm sure that you're able to answer to this because, you know, um, it takes a lot for a company to go from the exploration stages and move into production stages like you mentioned that you guys are going into. So, so how has that played out and what sort of sentiment feedback are you getting from your current shareholders and maybe some new ones that might come to the table? Um, as of late, we actually, great question. We're, we're actually getting some really good uh, feedback. Um, you know, we have to say as a junior exploration company to go from the stages of exploring to production is usually a number of years um, and a number of outstanding results to be able to do so. Um, our management team uh, individuals behind the scenes like Craig Perry. Um, the, the, there's a lot of relationships that happen in these things. Um, you know, certain properties that are not necessarily for sale or um, whatever the case is, relationships matter very much. So for us to be able to get our hands on this tailing project, um, it, it was tremendous. It's, you know, as a company, we're, we're cashed up exploring and about to go into production because we have a mill. The response from the shareholders is so positive. They're just, you know, when are more results coming out? Um, when are you gonna turn on the lights for the mill? You know, how much work needs to be done on it? Um, those are the type of questions we're getting and they're all great questions and they're, and they're forward looking questions. So I gotta be careful how I answer them. Yes. But um, in saying that though, you know, it brings excitement. It, it means that results will continue to come because everyone knows we have the ability to continue to drill. Um, and everyone knows that we've kind of cut a lot of years out um, being able to have a mill. So, you know, the exploration side is still there. Um, the production side is coming um, and we have the means to be able to keep going. So it's, it's quite an exciting shareholder base that we, we have at the moment. I, I just want to jump in here and say it's it's tough to to not keep shareholders happy when especially when you meet the milestones at the times you say you're going to. <laughs> it's kind of all they want is is you know you keep your word you meet the milestones you move on to the next and it's it's it, it comes with that reward. Uh, Lauren, did you want to add something to that? And it's not easy sometimes too because there's you know either whether it's Mother Nature or something else wants to throw a wrench into it, but. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, so this project called Magistral that, you know, we've known about this for some time is actually, a, it's a tailings deposit. So it's old mine waste that goes back to actually to the 1620s um, where they mined and they didn't, you know, their, their, their recovery systems back then for gold weren't as good as we are today. And so this, this tailings can still can, contains a, a fair, fairly good gold grade. And what's nice is it's already mined. It's already been ground up. You know, it's just sitting there on surface. And so it's a very cheap mining method for us where we basically have to just uh, load it up and take it to the to the plant where, you know, I don't we don't have to grind, we don't have to do much too much of anything except put it in the tanks and leach the gold out. Okay, so and that's the facility we have there, and it's in good shape. We've been uh, since uh, even before this uh, letter of intent that was signed, we were already doing metallurgical testing. So metallurgical testing. For your, for your clients, is, is we're, we're looking at how to best extract the metal out of the, uh, out of the rock. Mm -hmm. So um, in previous operators, we're only getting like 45 to 55% of the gold out. Uh, we've been doing a lot more work, test work, and we'll be doing more, but right now we've got it up to about 75, yeah. okay? So then we'll continue to do more work. There's other, other things that we have to look at, um, but yes, it, there's been previous studies that show really quite positive economics. Right now, as soon as we find it, sign the definitive agreement, we'll be going right to what we call a PEA, a, a preliminary economic assessment. That'll take about three months to complete. And following that, we're gonna go right into a uh, feasibility study. So within the first uh, 12 months of us signing, we will have all our studies completed. As we're doing the feasibility, uh, any upgrades we need to do in the mill and everything else will be completed. So the whole concept here is when we have all this done, let's let's turn the switch on and let's go. That seems like a very exciting timeline. Yeah, and work. And oh, uh, you know, again, here's the, a lot of people are scared. A lot of people, exploration companies will say, oh yeah, yeah, we're going to go into production. But they no, don't have any production experience. Um, this, and th in this case, being tailings too, and a plant already built, this is easy. Um, yeah. Again, it's just a, a, a bit more science and, and uh, off we go. I want to get into some of that production experience and talk about your team a bit more. But before we get into that, uh, I want to rewind back to something that you mentioned about life throwing a wrench at you. So as we all know, uh, we're working from home. We're all, the world is in the middle of this pandemic. Um, has it? affected what you guys are doing in Mexico when it comes to the workforce and things like that? Have you noticed, um, you know, any sort of setbacks or has it all just kind of planned out and, and worked in your favor? We, again, because our management we had in Mexico, we're able to actually set up our own COVID testing facility. Interesting. And so our people would be able to go in on a Friday. They'd be tested. We would keep them in a hotel. We'd have the results by Monday. And we've had this system in place now for five months, more or less. And so then, you know, once they've tested and they're, they're negative, uh, we have camps set up out there. They're isolated and they get to do their work. We haven't had too much in, in regards to slowdowns for us, except for myself. I'm more of a field person. I'd love to be down there. Uh, seeing everything, I, I'm pretty much a hands-on person, but because of what's been happening and everything else, I have to sit on a chair or a couch or, or whatever and, and, and do a lot of Zoom meetings. I, I can't wait till we can all actually get back into the field. And I, I feel your pain there, Lauren. <laughs> working off my couch as well. Um, yeah. So I want to talk a bit more about your work force in the region in Mexico. And Richard, again, feel free to jump in at any time. Um, a, a very important part about having these projects in these areas is having these good relationships with it, with the communities um, that are going to be working on the project. So can you talk to us a little bit about that, of, on how proactively you guys have been able to do that? Obviously, having the COVID testing on site and making sure that they feel comfortable coming to work 
is a great thing. But how have you guys been able to encourage the local communities to to work closely with you and your teams? Well, actually, in Mexico, so the laws and that the uh, the local communities actually have a great say in what you're doing. Uh, you actually have to get permits from them in order to do your work. So there's been a lot of interaction with them. There has to be. And it's sometimes, you know, when you have to negotiate with them, uh, historically in Mexico, it takes about three or four months, for example, to be able to get some contracts signed with the local community and with the government, the environmental permits, and else, as for example, for drilling. And again, I'm harping too much, but our local management was able to, to even during COVID time, take that three or four months down to about a month and a half. They knew the people, they had worked with them before, uh, mm -hmm. they knew the processes and we were able to get things done very quickly. And then aside, we were, we're as we're trying to move this uh, drill to a mobilizer second diamond drill, for example, when I was talking to the uh, drill manager and everyone else, they were saying that we're kind of going through a drought down there. And I said, how bad? He says, really bad. Farmers are having to sell their cows or do something because there's not enough water. And I said, well, and diamond drills need water. I said, I don't want to see us hinder anyone in what any shape, way, form, or nothing. If people are needing the water, if we have to not drill, so be it. But we also have a water truck. So the guys came back and said, hey, we found some old, basically mines full of water and everything else that the farmers can't access. And I said, okay, great. So we won't be bothering them, but I wanted you to make sure that if anyone's in serious trouble, I have no problem taking that water truck and go filling up a bunch of troughs now and then for the, for the farmers to make sure that everyone's okay. Absolutely. And that's, you have to be part of the community. All right, we do hire locally, we know what's going on, but and those, that's, that's minor stuff, but it, it means a lot to the people, right? Absolutely. Uh, you know how we talked about the shareholder sentiment earlier and how it's important to meet those milestones and get the work done. I think it's equally as important to to recognize when there are issues within the community that you're operating in and proactively be out there to help them with what they might need. Because at the end of the day, they're people as well. Absolutely. Exactly. No. I still so, about five, six years in Africa too. And then you do definitely, you really do have to, you know, help out the people there as well. And in and, and doing so, they're so grateful and, and it just makes your life so much easier. Absolutely. And, and I, I would say that goes all around the world. You know, you, you, you treat people the way you want to be treated and you work hand in hand on certain things. Let's talk a little bit about um, some of your team members. I know, I know Richard mentioned uh, Craig Perry, if I, if I heard correct. Um, but I want to, I want our audience to know that, you know, you guys have a very strong team behind you. The team has experience within the mining sector and bringing things uh, to fruition. So I'll let either of you jump in there and, and talk to us a little bit about some of the, the key members you've aligned yourself with. Richard, if you want to go ahead, if you want. To. Yeah, uh, maybe you can talk about the Mexico team and I'll talk about the team here in Vancouver. Um, Senor. Yeah, um, the team here in Vancouver is quite elite and, and people um, know them from their other companies. Uh, Craig Perry, um, you know, one of the founders of Inventa Capital, he, he's played a, obviously a large role in a number of things that we do. Um, he's the CEO of ISO Energy and, you know, he sits on the board of, of a couple other things and he's had a great, he, he has a great amount of experience um, not only in, you know, the precious metals, but in other sectors. Um, but it, it's been quite crucial for us here. Michael Connor, um, the CEO of Bizla uh, Resources, uh, quite a successful company um, from start. Well, they're not done yet, but from start to uh, present day, uh, you know, I couldn't say more about him. His communication skills, um, the ability to, you know, he... Like Lauren, everybody wants to be hands-on, um, but we've all had to adjust to, you know, our current circumstances. Um, Jamie Keach has joined us as well. Um, he's one of the newest members of our team, and, you know, he brings his media expertise, and, um, you know, we're so excited to have him. Wherever we need our stories to have more attention um, or... You know, like how you you yourself, it's sensitive to the 
audience that hears it, Jamie goes out of his way to make sure everyone hears and understands the language that may not be an everyday language for them. So, um, you know, and, and there's some other names to mention, but our, our invented team is so well oiled. Um, we've covered all aspects of the industry in, in what we need to make companies successful. And we're seeing the fruits of our labor in doing so. Um, you know, my background, I, I used to work retail banking um, and then I cut my teeth in, in investor relations and, and, and um, joined the team over here. So, you know, we're all pretty experienced as to what's expected in, in, the, in the market results, um, you know, putting, putting the right material out to the right shareholder base, uh, you know, as far as that goes. So we're, we're pretty all excited to work with each other as well. Um, you know, I call Lauren probably three times a day <laughs> just to talk to him, but um, he hasn't given up on me yet. He still picks up my phone calls. Hey, that's the pro that's the best way to make things happen is is don't just sit there and wait. Uh, pick up the phone, smile and dial. Um, yeah. Hold on, before before you jump in, I, I do want to jump in with a couple of things that Richard mentioned. So Richard and I have worked within the same office at one point in time. I see how hard he works, but also um, Michael, as well as Jamie Keach, you know, both of those gents have been dedicated to the mining space. Uh, I've been doing prior to this role, investor relations in the mining area for quite some time. And I've mm -hmm. always seen them and, and seen their dedication to this space. Um, so, you know, obviously you guys have aligned yourself with a lot of the right team. Jamie, I've seen some of his recent uh, video profiles that he's done and whatnot. So I, I can't wait to see what you guys have in store, not only for us, but for, for your shareholders as well, uh, as you move forward with the company. But Lauren, I'll, I'll, I'll give you the floor. I'll let you talk about some of your key team members in, in Mexico on, on the ground. Well, in terms of the geological side, we have three senior uh, geologists that have worked for major mining companies for an extended period of time. So they've worked on a lot of the deposits or mine sites down there. And that, that's great to have. That's key for the exploration projects themselves. So they, they know the rocks. They, they understand uh, a lot of what's been going on down through there. So that's, that's good to have. Uh, makes me feel comfortable because I can't go down there and see things myself. I'm a geologist as well, and it, it's great to go down and, uh, and and sit with the guys and look at the rocks. And it was kind of an old story. It's like uh, you, you throw a rock at four geologists and ask them what it is, and you're going to get five different answers. But, <laughs> it, it, but it's just it's the interpretation, the going through the processes of what's been going on, and that, and, and when you have guys, uh, senior guys like that together, you can really start to get the picture put together themselves. Um, also, we have the managed senior management down down there, like a whole team in terms of our, our accountants, lawyers, and the head of that is a, a fellow himself that uh, Benjamin, who has been in this business for a very long time, and, and that's the great thing is he knows of basically all the people down there who have the projects, the mining companies, the, the people themselves that are associated with the community affairs. Um, and he's, he's, his personality is great. He's just, uh, when you talk to him and he's just, he's always excited and everything else and working hard. And then I talked to him the next day and I said, well, you were just in Mexico City. Now you're in Durango. And, and then tomorrow you'll be in Sonora. Okay, <laughs> you know, good. You're a young man, but he's he's not he's younger than me, but uh, not not that much. So, but it's good to have a high energy team down there that's able to work and be able to talk to people. We also have mining engineers, we have metallurgists, people, consultants to the group as well that uh, you know work with us on that. So we have the whole team behind us through there. When we do sign complete this this magistral deal definitive agreement. I mean, we will be hiring out to a senior um, uh, engineering firm to help us with this PEA and the uh, feasibility study. And that will uh, that's critical to have a really senior company like that associated with us on that, because so that the project has complete credibility. And that we know exactly what we're getting into and what needs to be done. 
Perfect. I wanted to actually, uh, uh, and this is more out of my curiosity, because you see a lot of companies in the mining space now utilizing new technology, whether it be AI for, you know, some of their geophysical surveys and whatnot. Is your team using any of these, this new technology? In terms of the exploration right now, I mean, we're, we use our, we've been using our chemistry on the exploration projects where you do a gold assay you want to know what the gold is um but we do uh we call icp it's uh, as well which gives you about 30 different other elements for example you can ask what you want to see the chemistry and the, and, and the relationships and it can tell you a few things but that's been around for quite some time in terms of the rest of the uh, systems themselves these projects are fairly well advanced that you know uh, i've been working with some other companies helping them out in the past where yeah let's Let's run some airborne geophysics. Let's run some drones. Uh, these drones are getting better every year. The, 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 they just need the drones gonna have to just get a little bit bigger for some of these tools. And then it would be awesome because then you can really, you know, take these drones, small mobilization fees and stuff like that and go to areas and be able to fly them and accurately know where you are. Mm -hmm. That's the coolest stuff. And it mitigates a little bit of the risk as well of actually putting feet on the ground. Well, well, right now, just because I've been in the industry, there's still going to always be feet on the ground. Absolutely. Because that's the best way to do it, right? Actually, yeah. without the machines and the human touch. So, so I'm going to jump to both of you on this. Um, what's next then? What, what, what can people, along with your shareholders, look out for in the coming months from Tarachi? Obviously, you guys are, are moving into the, you guys will be doing a PEA, you mentioned, you're going into the production stages. But initially, what, what are some of the milestones that they can, they can keep up with? Um, the exciting stuff is right now would be assays coming out from our drilling. Yeah. Okay, that's, that's the key thing right now. So what's, how is our exploration place going? What's going on? So, you know, we'll be drilling a project. And then, you know, we'll, it might stop, put the drill somewhere else, do some other drilling over here, get our results, put it together, go come back, do more work. The exciting thing is the assays uh, from the drilling that we were waiting for. There'll be several uh, reports coming out. We'll be drilling for some time. Company's well-funded. We're able to uh, keep that program going on and definitely. Meanwhile, Magistrout, if and when it comes on, there's gonna be a lot of work uh, initiated right to start, not just with the preliminary economic assessment, but uh, more metallurgical testing, uh, more uh, drill testing in the area. There's going to be a lot of um, uh, mining engineers looking at the facility itself. What's really mm -hmm. interesting is that, of course, this is a tailings facility, but we have a crushing circuit sitting on top there as well. So doesn't mean we this plant can't do anything else uh, mm -hmm. other than tails. If we have, there's some oxidized deposits in there, you know, small deposits that aren't worthy enough to, or, you know, you can't afford to the capital cost to put them in production. Whereas mm -hmm. our plant being situated where it is, now we have an opportunity to maybe make that little deposit economic. Got it. I think that was a, a key point that we didn't talk about. So I'm glad that you mentioned that. Um, Richard, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, um, what I'd like to add is, you know, we haven't touched on the price of gold. Um, and like what Lauren has said, you know, like a small deposit making that economical, it, it becomes um, relevant to the price of gold. You know, we've had some corrections, but everyone remains, especially our shareholders, everyone remains optimistic that the price of gold is still going to reach some monumental uh, highs. So, you know, probably early early february march you know you, you sounded crazy if you said gold was going to cross 2000 um and it shot up and it blew past 2000 not blew past but you know it, it, 21s and whatnot um and then it, it did correct and it corrected rightfully so um you know it, it's expected in the market everyone's buying on the high um, right now, you know, gold has crossed 2000. It's, 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 you know, come down to the 1800s. It's been back up to the 19th, um, you know, post-election, all the other, you know, stuff that this 
program isn't about, but you know, now gold is, I believe it's going to settle and it's going to take its rightful place gradually um, over the next uh, year and a half. So we're, we're pretty excited. The shareholders are, you know, still optimistic. Um, and again, like you mentioned earlier, this for us is, you know, this is our nature. We were in this industry. So for those who aren't in the is industry to express that they also believe that gold is going to have a forward uh, tra trajectory, um, it, it makes us as the uh, facilitators happy. Yeah. Now, I'm glad that you bring that up. And, and it seems to be playing well in our conversation because you said this program is not about that. It actually is about that <laughs> because that was my next question is, is okay, to get yeah. your answers about or your thoughts on where you see gold going and how that's going to impact not only Tarachi, but the whole industry. Lauren, do you have anything to add to that? Oh, you bet. I mean, again, being in the industry for some time, I've seen this several times, but I mean, okay, so I looked for, I worked for the majors. Oh, Here's a question. These major mining companies are producing five, 10 million ounces of gold a year. Are they replacing them? They're not, right? The only way these gold mining companies have been doing this for a long period of time is they keep merging, right? To make it look good. But, and, and, and over time, and then the deposits are getting tired or, or exhausted. So just as a simple supply and demand, what's going on? And then we didn't have any exploration happening for some time. How many new projects are coming online or, or mm -hmm. things are being found? So, you know, that aspect of it, you're looking at it going, holy cow, um, you're going to be good for gold. Uh, the the um, currencies, you know, the, one of the things you talk to financial people, they say, well, gold or inflation, hyperinflation, things like that come into play when people don't like or they're not happy with the governments. It's, it's not necessarily that they're printing all this money out. It's just that they don't believe in the currency anymore. Well, what's happening in the world right now? <laughs> Basically, that scenario. And then even in gold, the, price, the gold itself, back in the 1970s, the average amount of gold being produced averaged about 10 grams. And since then, we've been going consistently down. Now the average gold grade being mined is like a gram or less. So... Um, because they just haven't been able to find those things. All the easy ones on surface aren't there anymore. So Nevada, where they had all this production and all this oxide material on surface, a lot of those things are, being, are getting close to being exhausted. So all these things combined to, to, to look at what's going to happen in the future with any company. And Trachy, we're not looking for half gram material. We're looking for pretty good gold grades and some of these deposits, uh, which yeah. will then give us even better economics. I really appreciate both of your insights and opinions on this topic. Um, Richard, where can our viewers find out more details on Tarachi Gold and, and keep up with your, your accomplishments and milestones? Uh, yeah, thanks for uh, pointing that out. Uh, Tarachi Gold, uh, we have our website up and running. Um, Inventa Capital is a aggressively growing group. Um, so bear with us, you know, websites are, are common that you can go to Inventa Capital and, and, and sort of look at the portfolio as a whole. Um, but for now, you can go to um, Tarachi Gold. We, we're on Twitter. Um, we're on uh, LinkedIn. Um, so all of our social uh, platforms are available um, and our website as well, where you can get the presentation. Perfect. We'll make sure to add uh, links into the show notes so it's easier for anybody watching to find the company and what you guys are doing. Lauren, um, towards the end of the show, I usually leave the floor with the the main individual, who in this case happens to be you, um, if, with any message you might want to put out to people watching. Um, I think just in general that they should be considering uh, – looking at gold mining or gold stocks if they're concerned about the future and that I, I think that uh, Tarachi is one of those that they should look at. I mean certainly look at companies that are produced, major producers, companies that are going to production and mm -hmm. people with uh, that have good good exploration plays. That's important but also good management. When I first started investing I, being a geologist, I always invested in companies with good properties. I lost money every time. 
So you, and you, you need to have that whole balance of, of, of good management, being able yeah. to uh, put everything together as well. And yeah. uh, I think that's what Trachi is. You know, I've, I've mentioned this a couple of times on this podcast. It's probably getting old. But when I first started in the industry, um, it goes back to touch on what you said, Lauren, is, is the first things we were taught from the group that I worked with was the three P's. There's actually four, if I'm not wrong, but it was people, property, and then the price. And that was the order that you would vet or look at deals in. Mm -hmm. So it's very important that you're ending off on that note where, where it's key to make sure that you have the right people behind the prop the project and mm -hmm. you know, that they've met milestones, they've had some sort of accomplishments and that you can, you can wholeheartedly believe in what they're doing. Um, I do want to thank the Canadian Securities Exchange for giving us a platform like Hashtag Finance to be able to talk to uh, executives like yourself, uh, Lauren, as well as Richard to, you know, kind of get your stories out on what the companies are doing uh, to, to stay away from, you know, the, the sales pitch aspect, but more talk about the people aspect of, of, of building a, a great company. So I wish you and your team at both Tarachi Gold, as well as Inventa Capital, nothing but success in mm -hmm. the coming months, as well as years. I look forward to hosting you guys again when you go into production or even before that, when you have some more stuff to talk about. We look forward to updating our audience with what you do. And to anybody watching, if you like content like this and you find it informative, CSC TV is the channel on YouTube. Feel free to hit like and subscribe if you haven't already. We would really appreciate that. And again, stay happy, healthy, and safe out there. Thanks to both of you guys and enjoy your day. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Cheers. Yeah.